possible for a believer to unbelieve? Is it possible for a believer to unbelieve? <laughs> You've heard of people who say, this guy was a pastor, but now he's an atheist. This person was a good man. He was, he was a believer in Christ, but now he doesn't. What really happened to these people? What happened to them? You see, the question of whether a believer can become an unbeliever is usually arising in an attempt to explain some very puzzling situations involving people that we specifically know. And uh, someone who at one time made a profession of faith and denied the faith that one really puzzles us a lot and and we ask how did this person he was a believer now he's not a believer does it mean people can lose salvation uh, and by all outward appearances he was a believer he was involved in in church life and perhaps in ministry so what really happened now did this believer become an an unbeliever was he once a believer and then he became an unbeliever what really happened now there are a number of prominent um prominent ways to understand this and uh, uh skeptics also who started out as professing believers we have we have seen so many of them on the internet if i just uh, name name but a few you remember dan becker who became an atheist and president of the Freedom from Religion Foundation. He started out as a minister and Christian musician, and then, poop, an atheist. You remember Charles uh, Templeton is now deceased, uh, who was an evangelist who at once, or at one time, he toured with Billy Graham, but later became an outspoken agnostic. Do you remember Bart uh, Harman? It's called E H. I don't know how to pronounce it. Harman, who is a New York Times best-selling author and well-known skeptic, who continually cast doubts upon the reliability of the New Testament. Harman describes himself as a former born-again fundamentalist, and he studied at a Moody Bible Institute and graduated from Wheaton College. Even in your village, even in your in your home, even in your church, in your town, how many people do you know? I'm, I just mentioned a couple of uh, probably international guys that you might be knowing who well, seemed to be once believers but they no longer believe. Of course, aside from this high profile that I've just mentioned to you, there are thousands and thousands, thousands of people and perhaps even millions of people who have made professions of faith. Mostly when they were children or young or maybe at a certain period of time. But years later, they maintain no faith in Christ. So whether they call themselves um, atheistic, agnostics or simply uninterested people, they have left the faith. I've seen them. Even right now, when you look at uh, on YouTube and and online, you will find some some preachers who are really great men of God back then, and and they used to preach really some true doctrines. But right now, they're they're away from the from the faith. Musicians who started like uh, they were Christians and and they were really good and and they loved the Lord. And what really happened to these people? Have you ever asked yourself this? And does this also terrify you at some point? And, and you say, probably, probably, it seems as, as if people can lose their salvation. It seems that. Okay. So what are we to make of these people? Were they born again believers at one time? And uh, later on they became unbelievers? 
You see, there are, there are a number of possibilities that are often suggested, different possibilities that people say. Some people say that these people were and are still saved even now. Even if they fell and, and they hated God and said, there is no God, I'm an atheist, I'm this and that, I don't care. They are still saved. There is one view that people say, oh yeah, these guys are still saved. They are born again. They are still in the body of Christ and they are indwelled and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Because uh, God's salvation is, is, is irreversible. And once a person has been saved, he will always be saved regardless of any future state of unbelief. Or call it disobedience. You see, many parents, they always, uh, many, many parents, they always take comfort in this idea. Maybe you're a parent and your child is really, uh, you raised him in church. He or she was a good person when they were growing up. And all of a sudden they've become drunks and uh, thieves and corrupt people and, and they deny Christ. Many parents, they'll take comfort in this and they say, because you cannot lose your salvation, I still believe my son is still saved and he will go to heaven despite all the things which he's doing and despite him denying Christ. All right? Now we see, even though a child may be walking far from the Lord, the parent holds on to that specific time and the place where they said, I have accepted Christ. I remember my mom used to, there's a time when I was really lost. Uh, I, I was just living like the devil. And uh, my mom was holding on on the point that, uh, I know Keith, there's a day that he, he said that he accepted Christ. And, and I still hold on this. And many times when I was just, uh, you know, drunk and out in the, in the, in the, in the, in parties at night at 3 a.m., she could call me and tell me, Keith, do you remember I gave you to Christ and you remember that day you accepted Christ? I still believe that you're saved and I know one day God will return you back to him. Or even if anything ever happens to you, you'll never be lost. That's, that's how parents are like. And, and I thank God for our parents, especially for the people who have been raised in in a church environment because there's always that pull. Now, let's look at the second possibility of uh, what really happens to these people. Now, some people agree that uh, these people were once true believers, but uh, when they stopped believing, they lost their salvation. Uh, and all of God's blessings have been reversed. The former believers have become unbelievers and now they are unsaved. Especially Pentecostals and charismatic churches, they say, you can lose your salvation. Hey, brother, stop doing this. You, you may lose. You may backslide. You may lose your salvation. That's uh, some churches what they say. And the third possibility or the third picture or view of some people is that uh, although these people may have given outward signs of having a genuine faith, their subsequent choices and statements reveal that they were never true believers. No matter what they say, they were never born again and they were never sealed by the Spirit. Because we understand, the Bible tells us, once you believe, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Let me show you this. Ephesians 1.13 In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed. You see, what happened after you believed? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption. So, the Holy Spirit is sealed until the redemption. He doesn't go out. And we see in Ephesians 4.30, Ephesians 4.30, to even, to even show you more, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto where? Unto the day of redemption. So he's not coming out. So meaning, if these people, for sure they, they left, they left and they said, I don't want any more 
things to do with God. It's, it's like a rope was cut. Does it mean that they were like God departed from them? You see, true believers may experience some time of doubt, uncertainty, disobedience, and uh, sometimes of unbelief. But they will never renounce their faith. That's one thing you have to understand. A true believer will never renounce his faith. And this idea is known as the preserve. Uh, pre <laughs> oh, this word is really hard. Preserverance of the saints. All right? Because God will always preserve his saints. All right? All who are truly believed will be preserved. They will. They will be preserved and they will also continue to persevere. You see, the Bible tells us, you will face many trials and tribulations. A righteous man falls seven times, but he still wakes up. You will fall, but you will wake up. You will find yourself in, in temptations and sins, but you will still wake up. That's, that's what the Bible tells us. It doesn't tell us salvation is a smooth thing. All right? Because they are kept by the power of God. We can only know that uh, the decision for Christ was genuine by the fruit that it produced. This is the approach that is more supported by scripture. Remember what the scripture says, all right? In the book of James uh, 2 verse 17, I hope I'm right, 2.17. Let me see this, all right? Yes, very true. See what the Bible says here. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. So, if their faith did not show works or good fruits, then their faith was probably dead. It was a fake kind of faith. Look at verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works so if my works are proving that i'm saying there's no god i'm an atheist i don't believe in god and all that then it means probably their faith was fake it was dead because jesus said the holy spirit how will you know you're in the kingdom of god you cannot say low there or there you cannot say that one is in the kingdom that was not because the only way you can know if you're in the holy ghost is when you look, uh, how can you tell wind is going to the east? You look at the fruits of the wind. You look at trees bending to the east. You see papers blown that side. You see dust. You see things going that side. So you can tell the wind is heading that way. No, the wind is heading because you can't see the wind. The same happens to faith. You can see faith, but you can see the fruits. So even... Even so, if faith has no works, then it is dead, being alone. So it means this faith that they claimed was dead. It was a fake death. You, you, you see, I can go to a theological college and, and learn about Jesus and I learn about Christianity. And I learn it in an angle of professionalism, the way I can learn business. And I go to the church and, and I understand. And uh, not really understanding with the power of the Holy Spirit, but I understand the Bible in a, in, a, in a business perspective. I can understand this Bible in a business perspective. And when I understand it in a business perspective, what happens? I will create a church and uh, do whatever I have to do. Look at those Nigerians most of the time. We're always seeing these uh, fake prophets in Nigeria, in, in Kenya, in Uganda, in in, even in Europe, even in, in, in the US, they are there. Even in, in Philippines, I saw another guy calling himself Jesus. They are there, false prophets. How comes they, they, they have mastered the word of God? How comes they have mastered the verses? How comes they speak the word of God with a lot of authority and a lot of knowledge? And they seem all, all, almost to say the truth. But at some point in time, you hear that pastor, he backslid. He's no longer in the faith. That one was a fake. He's no longer in the faith. Do you know why? Because the Bible tells us their faith was dead. Their faith was fake. Because scripture and history is filled with examples of people who made an initial positive response to Christ only to fall away later. 
There are so many examples in the Bible. In the parable of the sower and the seed. Do you remember that? Some of the, uh, the seed sprang. It sprang up so quickly only to wither away or be choked out by weeds. Sometimes that's how Christians are like some Christians. They they, they, they oh, I'm fire, 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 fire. And at the end of the day, they choke and they're done. All right? Let's, let's look at uh, Matthew 13 verse 20. Let me show you this story. Matthew. Uh, okay, Matthew 13 verse 20. Let me show you this story so that you can understand how what why people seem as if they they're backslidden all right um mm -hmm. look at this should i just read for you uh this parable yes this parable mm -hmm. look at this jesus said he gave a parable here he said behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the falls came and devoured them up. All right? So some seeds fell. And the falls, the birds, they came and took them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And with fall, they sprang up because they had no deepness of the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. All right? And others, they fell among thorns, and thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundred and some sixtyfold and some thirtyfold. All right. Now, Jesus gives us a story about the sower. And he explains it. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me explain to you here. Let me show you what Jesus explained about that sower there are how many kinds of seeds four one seed fell uh, upon rocks another one among thorns another one on the roadside and another one in good soil all right now look at what jesus answered hear therefore the parable of the sower when any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catches up away with that what that which is sown in his heart this is he which receives seed by the wayside. You just hear some message, all right, and you don't understand it. It's like a, a pastor is preaching, eh, and you see uh, Zechariah do, did this and this and this. Like the way I see in most churches, Zechariah did this and uh, maybe Moses uh, did this or Abraham or Aaron. And after preaching a, a, a message which is totally different from the gospel, they say, how many people here want to uh, give their lives to Christ? Okay, stand here. Say this. Repeat after me. Now, have these people heard the gospel? Do they even know what Jesus did for them? So how, what does Zechariah and Moses and uh, Abraham and uh, Joseph and whoever has to do with the gospel? Unless you're speaking it so that you can explain the Jesus hidden from the Old Testament and you reveal it in the in the New Testament and then you say that this was Jesus and this is how he died for your sins. So if you're just talking about maybe God will bless you, God will do this and then you just tell people come and be saved. These are the people who after being planted, they have no understanding and they are picked by Satan. Those birds and they run with it and you know, they'll seem as if uh, they were good but nothing happened. They were just on the roadside and Satan picked him them up. Look at verse 20. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that uh, heareth the word and anon with joy to receive it. You see? These people who are planted on rocks are just people who receive the word of God. Wow, this is true. It's like they are planted on rocks. And uh, they have no root in themselves. They only endure for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, and by and by, he's offended. Are you seeing this one? So these are the people who, they, they, they have been told, hey guys, hey, Jesus loves you, this is going to be like this, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you're not really told the true message. You're not told that it's a difficult path. It's a narrow way that you have to pass through. You just planted and yeah yeah finally i'm a christian oh i'm a christian jesus is god you see you enjoy but you have no root 
you really did not dig deep to understand that uh, this is a journey. It's a journey. You've just come to church and you've been told, hey, those drunkards, guys come here because uh, you know Jesus loves you and he'll do some great things to you. And after some while, when all those things happen, weird things, then you're left thinking and asking yourself, is, is God really real? And you live. He that receiveth seed among thorns is he that heareth the word. And care of his world and deceitfulness of riches and choke the world, the word, and he becometh unfruitful. These are the people who are planted in prosperity gospels. You're told that, uh, you see, Jesus is going to do this for you. Jesus will buy you a new car. Jesus will give you a new home. Jesus will do this. And you, you have a lot of promises, a lot of promises. But when you stay and you don't see these promises coming to life, Hey, come on, guys. I've been saved for one year now. I'm not seeing the car that I was promised. Come on, Jesus. You promised me a car. When... Now, do you mean Jesus died so that you can buy some car? Do you mean Jesus came all the way? He died so that you can buy a good house? You see, a confusion of uh, reasons why Jesus, <laughs> why people are saved. And that's why they will be chalked. They will be like, no, no, this person is not saved, but he's living large and he's doing this and this. And that's why you'll see some pastors, they are like some false pastors, maybe who claims to have been saved. They'll come start a ministry and they preach so, you know, so hard and hard. And uh, after preaching for a while and living for God for a while, they start seeing, ah, this ministry of mine, I'm not seeing members. I'm not seeing like YouTube views. I'm not seeing this and that. So what do these other people do so that they get views? Do, so that they get members. And now you start looking at the riches of the world. Because you saw another pastor wearing some uh, some nice suits and some suspenders. And uh, he looking good and with some money and uh, bodyguards. And you say, wow, are those people still in the same kingdom? I, I need this. So you start to walk in by sight and not by faith. And at the end of the day, you die. And you go back to the old world. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understands it. You see, there's a need for you to understand why Jesus died for you. He just did not die. And that's it. People will just say, I believe in Jesus. It's fine. Everybody believes in Jesus. Even the devils believe and they tremble. Believing in Jesus does not shock Satan. <laughs> Even Satan himself, he believes in Jesus. He knows that Jesus is real. So is he saved? Is at this, but people who understand why Jesus had to come and die so that he can redeem them from their sins, those are the people who stand the test, the test of time. They are the ones who bear fruit and bring forth some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Are you seeing the point here? You see, it's very important for you to understand. You can hear, oh, this guy was a pastor. This guy was this and that, but how comes? How comes? Because in the initial stages, it is very difficult to tell which plants will make it or will not. Time reveals the truth. All these seeds have been planted together in good soil, in thorns. Uh, 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 another on, 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 on uh, dry, dry land, you know, rocks. Another on, uh, at the roadside. All of them, they look the same. I've, the time of planting, they all look the same. But time tells who is going to stand the test of time. And who is going to show fruit. And which faith was true and which one was dead. Now, are you coming to the knowledge of why some people you hear, they have, they have, they have become unbelievers? In the, the book of John, chapter 6, it tells us that, uh, basically it's Jesus telling us that he is the bread of life. The bread from heaven. Do you remember Jesus saying that? He's the bread of heaven. And he makes some statements that are very hard to understand. Alright? Do you understand? Do you remember this in, uh, in verse 66? Look at this. Uh, John. John 6. Verse 66. Look at what Jesus said. Some people are departing. Why? Look at this. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Some of them, they went back. Why? Why are they going back? 
Why are they going back? These are people who had identified themselves as followers of Jesus, but they turned back when Jesus said something they disliked. I don't want to hear that gospel. Come on, you can't tell me I don't want. You can't tell me not to, 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 to smoke. That uh, my body is a temple of God. Who are you to judge? Why are you trying to judge me? Jesus is the only one to judge me. What, what are you trying to tell me to live a righteous life? But God knows my heart. <laughs> Do you know the Bible says the heart of man is wicked? If he really knows your heart, then you're in trouble because your heart is wicked. The heart of man is wicked. And God knows then, if he knows your heart, then he knows how wicked you are. You see, from that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Because most of these people, they, they re really never wanted to be purged and, and live the right way. And that's what we are seeing in modern society now. Many people are going back. Others are saying, oh, I don't want that. And that's what we are calling apostasy, the falling away. People are falling away. All the people who have been, it's like God is saying, hold on guys. <laughs> in the last days, I'm going to show you who was in my side and who was a fake. You will start seeing them. You will start seeing them. This one saying that, or you saying, oh, I don't believe in Jesus. That one telling you, oh, you can take the mark of the beast. You can do this and that. Have you seen some, some pastors and things like that? And, and they're telling you, oh, I, I, really, I really approve this, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about. Just go and see a video by <laughs> T.D. Jakes. And if you re still follow that guy, I, I, please go, run away. Those, those, are, those are guys who will just pull you back. T.D. Jakes, I saw, I saw him saying that uh, you should have uh, faith in the... You know what I'm talking about? Just go and type on YouTube. T.D. Jakes, faith in the... You know, you can complete the words. And you will see him telling people, enjoy. Come on, God has given... He, and then they try to cover it with some Bible verses. You see, the Bible says, the Bible says, they can say all that they care, but it's nothing. They were just fakes. They can have the biggest ministry in the whole world, but they were fakes. Now God is telling us, the last days, the true people, true believers will be seen. And the fake ones will be exposed. We'll start seeing them. If, if your body is the temple of God, why would you put something which is evil, you know, basically, because the Bible tells us, prove all things. Prove all things. You just say, oh, I, I, I just follow the world. I, I follow, uh, you know, these experts. I, I, I just follow the experts. I, I don't really care about uh, proving all things, as the Bible says. Let me just follow them, because uh, my faith is in them, not in God. Because God says we prove all things, but I don't want to prove I don't want to prove, I want to, I want to follow what the world is saying. Are you of the world or out of the world? Because if you are of the world, the world will love its own. And that's why you see these, these fellas, the world loves them. They are loved by everyone, the kings of the world, the people of the world, because they are of the world. But you, when you try to tell people, this is not right according to the way of God. Man, you will have a lot of dislikes on your videos. Nobody will want to watch. If, if I wanted my channel to grow very quickly, I, just, I would just need to tell people, hey, God is going to bless you. God showed me this. God showed me that. He showed me this. He showed me that. And he told me he has a plan for you. Two minutes, I'll be having one million subscribers. But what shall it benefit me to gain the whole world and lose the truth, my soul? Because at the end of the day, if I'm that kind of person, then the truth of God is not in me. It's not in me. So what shall it benefit me? Are you getting the point here? Do you remember <laughs> Jesus asking, look at this, what Jesus tried to ask here, John, in John 6, 67. He said unto the twelve, after people have started leaving him, they are leaving Jesus and they are going away. Jesus told to the, the 12 disciples, he asked them, will you also go away? Are you also trying to go? You disciples, 12, 12 of you, will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. 
You see, there are people still who can think of God even in, in troubling times. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, in the midst of troubles and issues, there are still people who can know that Jesus is the only way. When everybody is falling back and, and uh, Jesus is like, Now, all of you, all you ministers, you, you will also go away, right? You also want to go away, right? In the last times when I told you it will be tough, now because it's tough, you also want to go away, right? Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Why is Jesus saying this? I, I chose you. Yes, I chose you. Many are chosen, but many are called, but few are chosen. Jesus chose twelve people, but who really believed in him? You see, Judas Iscariot was just among those fellas. Eh? They, they always seem to be ministers. Have you ever seen these people? But they are devils. They are devils. They seem to be ministers, but they are devils. They are only hiding like this. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For it was, it was he that should betray him, being one of the twelve. You see, one of you is a devil. In the church, they are devils right now. They are devils. They are devils who are living among us. And those people... They, they looked, who could have said that Judas Iscariot was, was a betrayer? He could uh, run away from, from Jesus Christ and betray him and eat some money and run. Who, who could have thought about that? Who could have thought that? Do you remember that on the night when Jesus was arrested, Peter and Judas looked very much alike. Peter and Judas, they looked much alike. They both denied the Lord. <laughs> right? But denying the Lord, one denied out of fear. Out of fear. Peter, he was afraid, but the love of God was in him. He could not go away because he truly believed in Jesus. His love was, of God was in him. Yes, he denied Jesus three times. He said, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him. Judas also did the same thing. But with Judas, the love of Christ was not in him. He was not a believer from the first go. You see, a believer and an, un, and a, and an unbeliever. A believer, even if he denies Christ, he will still come back. Someone who was a fake, he will deny and go. For G, he'll never come back. Alright? Few days later, we understand. After it all went south, few days later, they showed themselves to be very different. Peter and Judas... They all seemed different. Judas, he was overcome with remorse, but he did not repent. All right? He just went and committed suicide. You see, crying and crying. Oh, Lord. I was just talking to my sister yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And uh, we were talking and she was telling me, Oh, you see, there's that day I felt the Spirit of God and I was crying. I'm, I'm like, it's, it's fine crying, but you see, crying does not make you a believer. Crying does not make you a, a person who loves Jesus. You see, these churches where you just go and, and pastor preaches and, and when he wants to call the altar call, he has to pr play some music, some string music, and, and you feel, wow, that, that feeling of now I'm crying. I think I'm close to God because I'm crying. Crying does not make you close to God. What makes you close to God is did you believe? Did you understand and believe? You see, you can cry, but you don't understand the gospel. You've just uh, said, oh, I love Jesus because of emotion. Maybe the music behind, maybe you're terrified. Like those people who try to convert people by telling them, you see, hell is bad. And fine, they can come to Christ because hell is bad. That's, that's one point. But they won't remain because when the fear is over, it's like you getting saved at the middle of the night because you had something walking on the roof and you're scared and you're like, Jesus, please come into my heart right now. That time you're, you're, you're doing that because you have the fear. What if tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m. at the beach, sitting at the uh, uh, sunbathing, will you remember Jesus again? Because you never understood. Are you seeing this? Judas, he was remorse. He cried. He felt bad. He went and threw all the money that he had gotten and said, no, I've done a wrong thing. But did he repent? 
No, he just went and hanged himself. Remember, let me show you this one in, in Matthew. Matthew 27, uh, verse 5. This is a picture of why you need to understand the gospel and why you see some people departing. It's because they never understood. And he cast down the pieces of silver, this Judas, in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He never went and repented and told Jesus, I'm sorry, and or maybe went at, at a corner like Peter did and, and prayed and said, Jesus, I'm sorry about denying you or what I did. Peter was filled with shame. He wept as well. But then he repented. Look at this. He did not deny Christ. He did not do all those weird things. He held on because now he remembered. He repented himself and felt remorse. And he knew that I'm a believer. What am I doing? Sometimes we will fall, my friends. We will fall. Even myself, I fall so many times. We will fall. But are we denying Christ? Are we? De let, let me show you. Matthew. Matthew 26. Look at Peter. Verse 75. Look at what Peter did. Look. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus. Did Judas remember? No. He just went and hung himself. Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. He went back to himself. He remembered the words of Jesus and repented. Repenting is basically changing your mind. You remember and you change your ways and you say, no, I was going in the wrong way. Let me go back again to the right way. Three days later, Peter is still with the disciples and he becomes the apostle of the risen Christ. While Judas, what happened? He went his way. He already died. You see, neither Judas or Peter, in this case, lost his salvation. <laughs> Judas... The true nature of Judas was that of an unbeliever. He was an unbeliever from the beginning. He was a fake from the beginning. He liked Jesus. You see, you can like Jesus. Oh, I love this. I like this Jesus guy. He seemed to be a good guy. Like raising the dead. Have you seen slay queens when they are trying to talk? Like this Jesus really rose the dead. He fed the 5,000. So I can call upon him and he can give me some goodies. You can like Jesus, but probably you don't even believe. You're an unbeliever from the first go. Maybe Judas was just there because he was a treasurer. And uh, of course, if you're the treasurer, you have some, um, you take care of the money and, uh, the, you know, there are loopholes maybe to make some money. And you just like, I just like the ministry of Jesus because I'm, I'm always making something. There are always, I can hide a few shekels here and there. And, uh, you know, he never realizes. I enjoy this and I, I can always pray and do whatever I have to do because, you know, this Jesus, anyway, I enjoy it. I feel so nice. You see, that's, that's, that's one point. But did he really believe? You see, we might say that he only pretended to be a believer. Judas was the treasurer. And uh, being the treasurer, Jesus tells us that uh, he was picking up some money for himself. Look at uh, today's modern prosperity preachers. I think they love Jesus because they can dip some money from that bucket and they can say, ah, let me just today read the Bible because I need to understand how to manipulate this sheep of Christ so that I can dip some money and help myself. When the money is over, they run. They say, I don't want. Because look at this. Uh, in the book of John 12 verse 6, look at Judas. The Bible tells us clearly that he used to steal some money. Just the same way most people will steal some. This, uh, John 12 verse, uh, verse 6, it says, This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. You see? This is exactly how today's modern fake Christians are like. Not because they care for the poor or they care about the things of God or they care about God himself or they love him, but it's because they are thieves. And he had the bag and bare what was put therein. <laughs> Are you seeing this one? He used to took, take some money, Judas, and steal. Not because he really cared or he really loved Jesus. So he was an unbeliever from the, from the word go. That's exactly, you will see, big ministries. And later on, you hear the pastor left and he went 
uh, to live like the devil and you say this pastor was a believer no he was not a believer he only kept the money he enjoyed the money and the goodies he enjoyed this and this and that's why these fake pastors will tell people to put abominations in them in in their members please put those abominations in you so that my ministry can continue i don't want this ministry to be closed you see if you don't do this then the ministry will be closed and, and i'll be out of work because it's not about the souls it's about the money it's about the money it's not about the souls i don't care about the souls you guys you you, you can die you can go wherever you have but i i need the money because i need to dip my hand those are those are Judas's in church. And that's why many of them are going away. Alright? And when we look, Peter on the other side. Peter, on the other hand, or on the other side. For a short period of time, he pretended to be an unbeliever. He pretended to be an unbeliever. But over the course of time, his true nature was unveiled. The redeemed not nature of him showed who Peter was. He may have said, I don't know Jesus. I don't know. I don't know this man. You're only pretending to be an, an unbeliever. But your heart, your heart cannot deny you. It will always come back to the truth of who you are. Peter was a believer in Christ. He loved Jesus with all his heart. So he could pretend, I don't know this man Jesus. I don't know him for a while. But the true nature of Peter, mm -mm. He came back to his senses. But Judas, he said, oh, I have, I have, this Jesus, I don't know him. But that's, that's the truth because even from his heart in the first place, he was an unbeliever. So, First John directly addresses the issue of professing believers. The book of First John, it addresses the, the issue of professing believers who seem to become unbelievers. Some false teachers who had appeared to be true believers at one time and they were troubling the church. Have you ever heard this? Let, let me show you in First John. First John uh, 2 John 2.19, 2 verse 19. It tells us about this. Look. It tells us why they went out, these people. Why did they go out? Why, why did they leave us? Why did these people leave us and become unbelievers? This is the reason. Look at this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Oh, these people, they were not with us all this time. For if they had been of us, uh -huh, uh -huh, they would no doubt have continued with us. You see? You see? If they were with us, they could have stayed with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now we get the point. They seemed to be with us, but they were not with us. But the reason they went out is because God, want, God allowed them to fall away from the truth, to be apostate so that it can be made manifest, that they were fakes from the word go. Are you now understanding the point? That these people, although they departed the faith, they appeared to be genuine. Although they did this, John, John made it very clear that they had actually never been with us. They've never been with us. People may be able to fake it for a while, but they cannot sustain that faking forever. They can't sustain it forever. The truth will eventually outlast their fakery. Because the Bible tells us, anyone who is born of God, he cannot continue faking. Look at this. In the book of 1 John, 1 John 3, verse 9. Look, anybody who is born of God, who is truly saved, he cannot continue faking. He cannot continue in sin and refusing and denying God. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. That's why Peter could not sin. He denied Christ, but it was burning him inside him because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts us. He tells us, Stop this. This is unlike you. This is not you, Keith. This is not you. You are called to be a different person. You, this is not you. You are pretending. Stop denying Christ, Keith. Go back to where you belong. Stop denying. Stop denying. Stop doing this. This is not you. But Judas could not hear those words. Why? Because he was a fake. 
He was a fake. A true believer may fall into disobedience and struggle and doubts, but a true believer will never renounce Christ. He will never renounce Christ. A person who has renounced Christ by his words or deeds has not lost salvation. You may deny, and I may say, I don't believe in Jesus. But deep down in my heart, I do. I'm only pretending because I understand that Jesus is God and Jesus died for my sins. Some, some Al-Shabaab or ISIS or what, whoever they are, they can hold a gun on me like this and tell me, denounce Jesus now. Say Allah is God. And I'll be like, oh, Allah is God. But do I really mean that Allah is God? No, my heart is very different. I can't even lose my salvation. Even if I say Allah is God and they and they tell, oh, you're good now. Now we'll give you a mosque here too. I can do that whole mosque for one year and still go to heaven. Because my heart, my faith is not in that. I know whom I've believed. I can pretend and once I get a chance to sneak out, to run away from them, I will sneak out and go away and go back. Just the same way Peter did it. I can deny Christ. Peter denied Christ for three times. Three times. I don't know this Jesus. Because he was in terror. He was troubled. He, he was scared. But his true nature of his heart was seen later on. Because he did what was right. Are you seeing this one? Are you getting the point? So a person who has renounced Christ by words or deeds has not lost his salvation. Rather, he is demonstrating that he never had genuine faith. When you see somebody saying, I don't believe in Jesus, and he goes away, and he goes away for G, never coming back, he never had genuine faith. But whosoever, even if they will denounce God, and they will denounce two, three times, they will always come back. There is a seed in Christ. And of course, it, it, it's, it's not a habit, you see. It's not a habit that I'll denounce Christ here, I'll denounce him there all the time, I'm denouncing him. No, that's not the seed of Christ. That's not uh, genuine faith. Alright? So, these people who go away and they go and they were once believers and uh, you hear, oh, this person became an atheist and that's it and that's it. They were never with us. Alright? They were never with us. This is one reason why church discipline is so important. You have to have church discipline. Alright? And uh, in Matthew 18, Jesus outlines the steps. And he says, if a person in the church sins, he should be confronted and given the chance to repent. Once all the steps in the process have been followed and there is still no repentance, then the unrepentant sinner is to be put out of the church and treated as a non-believer. This process is designed to get the sinner off the fence. Because there are people who just stay at the fence. They, they keep on saying, I'm here, I'm here. When you continue doing what is wrong, then stay aside first. Don't infect the other people with your with your with your with your beliefs. Stay aside. Stay aside. And this process helps to get people from that middle point whereby they're always like this. Alright? Either he will see the error of his ways and be brought to his senses, or he'll decide that the church, that the church and the Christian life are not that important and walk away completely. Either way, the church discipline uh, uh, forces a person's true nature to come out. Alright? Look at this. Do you remember what Paul told uh, people in the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 1? Look at this fornicator. He's a believer. He's a believer, but he's keeping on fornicating and doing wrong things. And Paul is saying, you church... Why are you not taking action on this guy? Yes, I know he cannot lose his salvation because he's saved once. If he's really a believer, he's saved, sealed, and sanctified. But this should not be how things are, are supposed to be like this. Look, look at this. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. These are believers. These are born-again believers. And such fornication is not as so much as named among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. You see? These are believers who are practicing incest here. And you are puffed up as a church. You people church, you are puffed up. And you have not rather mourned for this one person who is doing this. That the one that has done this deed might be taken away from you. You see, the verdict is to make sure this person 
who is doing these things is taken aside so that he can realize himself and come back in truth and in spirit. And if he stays there, then it means he was never born again, for sure. For verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, I've judged already as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. So Paul is giving his verdict here. He says, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together by and, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such one unto Satan. You see, this fornicator, if Peter could not have done what is right and re gone back to himself, then uh, God could have let Satan deal with Peter, deal with his flesh, but not his spirit because he's saved. He cannot lose his salvation. Look at this fornicator. To deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of what? The flesh. That the spirit might be done what? Be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Why is the spirit being saved? Because this person cannot lose salvation because he is a believer. Only his flesh can be lost. Are you seeing? So we need to ask ourselves, am I a believer from the heart? Or am I just a believer by mouth and words and fakery like Judas? Are you seeing the point here? Because a genuine believer can never become a non-believer because he or she has been born again by the Spirit of God. It is not one's faith that keeps uh, one, a, a person safe, but it is the power of God that helps us to continue in faith. Okay? So it's really, really important to understand this. That uh, the rope can never be cut. The rope between you and Christ, where he's holding you, cannot be cut. And those who seem as if the rope was cut, no, they were, they were never believers in the first place. They, they may have a ministry of 550 years and 100 years and whatever and whatever and big numbers of people who seem they have been converted through the ministry and all that, but they were just fakes. They can be fakes. So you have to ask yourself, if those people left, why did they leave? Probably they were not saved. And if you're out there and you're still like, uh, oh, oops, sometime I think I've, I've moved back and seems like uh, I've never been saved. Let me give you the gospel, how you can be saved. Let me give you the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And uh, it's all about how that Christ died. All right. Christ died for our sins. Jesus, he died for our sins. He was there at the cross. He died for our sins. You are the one who was supposed to be at that cross. But Jesus said, no, no, Keith, calm down. Hey, Mercy, sit down. No, Peter, relax. Ken, relax. Let me go there on that cross. Let me die for your sins. Let me take your debts, your sin, your, your shame, your sicknesses, your everything, your everything that you have, let me pick it up. Let it be imputed unto me. And me, let me impute my righteousness on you. Let me impute my life on you. My baptism on you. My fulfilling the law on you. My keeping of the commandments on you. Remember Jesus kept all the commandments. He never broke one. Let me keep all, put all the commandments on you. Let Have my life and let me have yours. That's what the gospel is all about. That's the good news. Gospel means good news. That Jesus died for your sins. Because we are all sinners. Romans 6, 23. For all have sinned and have come. Uh, uh, and they all deserve to, to die. Alright? We are all supposed to die. But Jesus, while you are still sinners, he died for us. So that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. Do you believe in him? If you understand these words, you understand and put it in your mind then all you need to do is confess what you have believed. Because confession comes after you believe. You can confess what you don't know. That's why the sinner's prayer cannot save. You only confess what you have believed. You tell Jesus, Jesus, I now understand that you died for my sins and you are buried and that you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe in you and I receive this payment of sin, this atonement that you gave me by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. And my friends, once you've done that, then you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've enjoyed the, the, the video. Uh, you can uh, like the video, you can share, you can subscribe, and also check out the description. We have a couple of other channels. 
uh, outside YouTube, please go and check them out and also share to your friends. Let's be blessed together and don't worry about the noise about the kids here. It's it's weekend and kids are they are out, <laughs> so they they are not in school today. And my apartment is just noisy, so don't worry about that. What matters is hearing the gospel. God bless you and have a good time.